Hey there. If you've been following me from part one where we got the prerequisites needed to use Azure Cognitive Services batch transcription functionality from Power Automate, brilliant. Like I said, we did that in part one. Part two, we created the batch transcription. This is part three, where we'll be getting the transcription request and checking the status of its results. I'll be going into how I parsed the JSON response that we got back from the post request that created the transcription, how I retrieved the transcription, and how I used the do and tell action in Power Automate to pull the transcription and check its status periodically. We'll also do some housekeeping at the end to delete the transcription from Azure Cognitive Services. And finally, we'll look at how I analyzed output of a successfully completed transcription. If you've not been with us since the start, that's great too. You can download the flow from my website, www.34365.com to do it as you please. Here we go. In order to get to those values, I need to use the parse JSON action. Now I can't exactly remember where I found this. It was a while back in another demo or workshop. But this is a really handy action used to separate each of the elements out of your JSON response. And you have to create your own schema, but you can also generate from sample. So that's what I did. And the sample I used was the output that I got from my previous action from creating the transcription. And this is an action I can see myself using a lot the more I use flow. The next step, I'm going to initialize variables for both the ID and the status. The response we get from our parse JSON action provides all those elements there. Now we're going to set this to the ID. Notice there's two IDs. Because the ID that we want is in the, the kind of top level, this one here, of our output, we'll know we've got the right one because it won't do that. If it's any of the other IDs in the bottom level, then it will do and it'll automatically create and apply to each. So that's us chosen the wrong ID. So I'll delete that and create the variable again. I've found that if you've got two items here, it tends to always be the bottom one. But as I said, I'm quite new to all this, so that's just in my experience. Whether that rings true in other scenarios, I don't know. So what we're going to have to do next is get the transcription and check if the status is no longer running. But if it is still running, we're going to have to keep doing that. We're going to have to keep getting a transcription, parsing the transcription and checking the status. And in order to do that, I use the do and tell action. So we're going to say keep performing these actions until the transcription status is not equal to running. First thing we need to do in order to check whether the transcription has finished running is to get the transcription. And that's dead easy because if we look at our Swagger document, all we need is the URI followed by the ID. So we're using get, use the same URI as we previously used, and put an ID in. And as before, we pass our key as a header. As before, we'll need to parse the response of the transcription. And we can just copy that from the previous step. We'll need to set the transcription status to the current status. Then we'll need to check that the current transcription status is not equal to running. And if it's not equal to running, we want to use the delay action to wait one minute before running the loop again. The reason I'm waiting one minute is because the do until loop by default will run 60 times before it stops. I noticed that the transcriptions take about seven minutes to run on a 12 minute audio clip. I'm sure that'll differ depending on your audio, but if we just keep trying it every minute, 
then that gives it a full hour to run. If you're using larger audio clips, you might want to change that delay. I'm not going to put anything in the FPS box, because if this condition returns true, I want to just continue with the rest of my flow. The first step I wanted to do once that loop's finished is to check the status of the transcription again. But outside of our do until loop, we're going to check the transcription status is equal to succeeded. If it's not, we'll terminate the flow of an error. And I'm going to leave the FES actions alone just now. I'm just going to put a brand new step after that check and that's going to be to delete the transcription. Because I want to run a test first and just check what the output of getting the transcription is when the transcription is successful. Because that output will contain the path to a transcribed file which previously weren't there because the transcription hadn't completed yet. So to delete the transcription is another HTTP request, it's a delete request, and then you can check this in Swagger, the URI is just the exact same as our GET. And again we just copy our key into the headers. So I'll just save that and then run a test. So my flow's run successfully. We have a look at the do until step. It took six minutes to run. So seven times. Having a look at the get the transcription step and the output, this results URLs is empty. That's the bit that we need. So for each one of the so for the first six times of the seven, I would expect that to be empty. You can see Status is running, it waited a minute, on to the next one, status running, no results URLs, then if we skip to 7, we've got two results URLs, now the reason I have two channels is because my audio is in stereo. If we scroll down to the status, it's succeeded. So I'm going to copy that response into Notepad++, plus plus, set the language to JSON. And yeah, the either one of those two URLs will give us what we want. So that's our batch transcription request completely successful. In the next part, we'll look at what we can do without getting that transcription and saving it into a text file on OneDrive. Until then, lose guys.